Hey everybody, I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar today, and we've got a pretty special thing going on today. We're gonna talk to Ted Ludwig and Michael Watts about the the Chinnery Blue Guitar Collection, what, what's going on with it, what it is, where it's going, a new project that these two gentlemen have uh, embarked upon to bring these guitars to the world. And I don't even know where to go from there, Ted. It's great to see you. And uh, Michael, it's nice to meet you. So why don't you why don't you start by just kind of for people that don't know, and, and there's some people that don't know, what is the Blue Guitar Collection? So the Blue Guitar Collection started when uh, Scott Chinnery had uh, he had ordered a guitar from Jimmy Diakisto, and uh, the the guitar was was one that he had uh, built. It was one of his last instruments, the Blue Centura. And um, when uh, Jimmy D'Aquisto died, um, Chinnery decided to, to bring in 22 luthiers to build these beautiful instruments to commemorate the life of, of D'Aquisto. And so um, they all had to be 18 inches. They all had to be blue. They all had to be completely acoustic. Oh, I and, mean, don't forget the nut. Oh, and they all had to have. <laughs> you can't forget that. Uh, I, I want to say a one and seven eighths inch yeah. nut width, Huge. which is a bit Huge. wide because because Mr. Chinnery was a, a, a quite a, a, a tall man. That's got the, the one and seven eighths is not. I, I understand the need. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, interesting. So so that's one of one of the guitars you're holding in your hand right there, huh? This is actually the blue Manzer Absinthe. Oh my God! Yes, and it's just just a lovely instrument. Um, that that is just that's freaking gorgeous. This was and actually, um, Scott Chinnery had asked several luthiers, um, Linda, uh, John Monteleon, Bob Benedetto, Tom Rebecca. He had asked them to create an instrument with a sound port system. Right. Some of the some of the sound could come up towards the players. Uh, this one, Linda actually created with the actual trap door system that opens and closes like this. So if you close it all the way, it, it would have uh, one sound, and then if you leave it open, it has a different sound. Actually, now most people just leave them open. Yeah, that's gorgeous. That's a, so let's let's tell them really why we're kind of here t today. We've been talking about this for quite some time. We're going to pull the pull the curtain wide open and let people see behind the kimono if you will um sure. you guys are you guys are making videos on each one of the guitars that's to, correct to introduce the guitars one at a time to the world and uh and we are honored as jazz guitar today to be the people bringing this you know to the world if you will to bring these these videos to the world so let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about the process of, uh, of video, you know, of videoing each guitar. And tell me, tell them about what you're going to do. What's going to happen? What, well, what can they expect? Uh, if we get it right, you can expect <laughs> some of the following. Um, this is a very important uh, collection. My own background is in flat top guitars, but in luthier made flat top guitars. So I'm more than familiar with uh, people like Linda Manza, John Monteleone, um, as luthiers of, of flat top instruments. And uh, I love recording uh, totally acoustic guitars. So for me, the joy of this project is to bring out the voice of each individual instrument. Now there's a lot of them. Uh, the main concept behind the, uh, the collection to begin with uh, Scott Shinnery's wife was an artist, and the way that he saw it was by commissioning 22 different guitars on the same theme. It was very similar to commissioning 22 incredible portrait painters to paint the same subject. And by giving them certain parameters to work within, um, he was able to encourage them to really use their own creativity to meet that brief. So we have a very wide range of instruments uh, from more traditional things. So we've, we've got a beautiful Super 400 uh, from the Gibson Custom Shop, which came as a surprise to me because, um, you know, I've played 
quite a few Super 400s and never really got on with them. This thing, it is like steering an oil tanker, but once you get it moving, <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful experience. And then Very special. on the other side of things, we, we cross into some really light, responsive uh, instruments. Uh, the Zeidler is particularly beautiful. Uh, Brad Nickerson's instrument is gorgeous. Then we get into the realms of the sort of high art piece. And that's when we start hitting Linda's work, uh, the Benedetto as well, and, uh, and John Montelion necessarily. Um, so the way that each of these incredible artists uh, responded to the brief has been a real education in, in the creativity uh, that is going on in the, the, the archtop world. And that has filtered through into the flat top world, which, which I know and love. Um, the main thing that we're looking to do is get these guitars played and, uh, and record that in the process. So since my arrival here a couple of weeks ago, uh, I've filmed sessions with, uh, with players such as Ted, of course, but also uh, guys like uh, Jost Ingle Branson, the, the Norwegian guy out in, uh, in New York. Um, Chico Pinero uh, from Brazil has been on these. Uh, uh, Professor Ben Scher of, of Berkeley. Um, and it's been a real joy to hear not only the individual voice of each instrument, but the way that it responds to a different player's touch. Mm -hmm. You know, because we all demand different things from the guitar. We're all looking for different colors and shades and nuances. And these guitars have that. Each one of these instruments has a wide timbral spectrum. It's got a wide dynamic range. That comes with a caveat. You have to be able to play the thing in the first place. Now, for me, an 18-inch instrument, I'm lucky if I can reach the first string, you know, let, let alone really explore the textures involved. Mm -hmm. But once you get in there, you know, there, there are so many beautiful uh, light and shade aspects of these uh, guitars. And we, we want to wake them up, you know, because a guitar will, will go to sleep. They've been, uh, they've been unplayed for too long. Last night, um, Ted played a, a beautiful round of, uh, of duets with Paul Asbell and we basically just set the two guys up together um, and we were passing them two guitars at a time, pretty much at random. So you're going to hear some extraordinary combinations. Uh, my background as a sound engineer um, has always been based on the idea of, of real clarity and purity of sound. So what you're hearing is essentially uh, the guitars themselves, just through two microphones, I, I use Microtech FL M300 microphones. Um, it's a spaced pair. There is nothing else going on. No fancy preamps, no reverb, no EQ, nothing. It was all about, I, mean, I had the best seat in the house essentially. Uh, Ted and Paul were sitting here and I just moved my head until I found where it sounded good and I put a mic there and then I did it again for uh, for Paul. So we've got some really detailed, beautiful recordings. And I think that speaks to the, the collection as it is now. You know, it started off as something of a something of a fantasy, something of a of a concept. Now what we're left with, uh, nearly 35 years later, is 22 very, very good guitars. But not only that, this is a snapshot of the careers of some of the world's greatest living and historical archtop makers. I mean, it's a glorious opportunity, really, really beautiful thing to be involved with. And I, for one, can't wait to share the results. I mean, Ted, bless him, we put him to work. This has not been a holiday for him in the least. You know, we, had, um, we handed this man 22 guitars, one after the other. After battling a cold, exactly. As well. <laughs> After battling a cold, so I mean, what a what a way to get through it. Um, and what you'll hear with each of these instruments now for Ted's solo recordings, these were stereo recordings. Um, so we had two mics on each instrument, and he will take you through each guitar. He'll introduce it to you. He'll talk about it in terms of the aesthetics, the sonics, and the ergonomics of each guitar and then we get to hear the man put it through its paces as well. So I'm leaving town um, back, to, back to the UK in a couple of days' time with the, something in the range of 30 hours worth 
of, uh, of content. And that's players like the New York Sessions, like TED Sessions, but also interviews with the Luthiers themselves. We've had the opportunity to reunite these incredible artisans with instruments that they created over three decades ago. So we got to see Linda Manza seeing her guitar for the first time since then. Kim Walker seeing his guitar. John Montilione reunited with his extraordinary masterpiece. In addition, we've recorded a couple of uh, sessions of an expert views uh, the blue guitars. So uh, we spent time with Chris Mirabella and uh, he looked at the uh, De Quisto instrument obviously with his heritage, his background, he's got a massive appreciation of, of Jimmy's work. Uh, this was the first De Quisto guitar I'd ever played. You know, in, in the flat top world, you've got to understand, the arch top is very, very scary. You know, we look, we look at you guys and we're like, I don't know where to start with that. You know, it's, a, it's like learning a different language and I love learning different languages. So for me, it's been a beautiful opportunity. And then finally, we made our way up to, to Montreal. We saw Mike Greenfield there, um, who has made arch tops in the past, but he's primarily known for his flat tops for guys like Andy McKee, Keith Richards, Paul Stanley. You know, he's a superstar flat top luthier. But one of the most poignant moments was seeing him reunited with, uh, first of all, the De Quisto, which everyone wants to see that. Uh, in, it, in many ways, the collection could be a reference library for guitar creators. Um, but really, for me, the, the standout moment was seeing the extraordinary sonic cathedral that Bojo had created. And Bojo was a friend of Michael's back in the day. So it was really uh, a very moving scene to see him reunited with, with the work of someone that he, you know, was dear to him. Um, so in so many ways, from a sort of, uh, from an artistic point of view, it's been a beautiful challenge. From a musical point of view, it's been a beautiful, beautiful experience. But just from the, just from the stories, Mm -hmm. that the guitars have, you know, to, to have the opportunity to tell them, to have the opportunity to document this incredible thing. It's a privilege. You know, I tell you what, I've listened to a lot of people explain things to me in the past. Michael, that was a masterful job. <laughs> that really was. You did a great job of, of telling us that story. Absolutely beautiful. Hey, Ted, would you do me a favor? Yes. Would you, would you play a few notes on that thing? Mm. Oh, cool. You know, just uh, hit a hit a lick or two, and then maybe grab one of the other ones and hit a lick or two. So, laptop mic, I'm afraid. But uh, that's a, listen, we, we're not expecting this to be uh, unbelievable. You just just hit a lick or two. That's okay. That'd be unbelievable, Tim. Uh, <laughs> it's by chance, right? Yeah. <laughs> Make you famous, baby. Uh, he already is famous. <laughs> sublime there ted that's pretty sublime grab one of the others can you grab one of the others just pick just a maybe. quick point this is pretty much exactly where i put the microphone yeah as well. no i got it i'll tell you what my surprise you like was this, one, didn't you? this was my surprise pick mm. this guitar is the mark lacy guitar uh-huh and i really like this guitar let me let me let me hear that one just yeah. for fun sure It's an acoustic monster, isn't it? Is the Diaquisto handy? Is it close by? Uh, the Diaquisto, yes. I suspect it probably could be. One second. As long as, we're, as long as we're doing it, guys, why not? It, it may still be in dad gadget. Oh, that's okay. What, what's <laughs> a, 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 uh, what, is the Mono Leon right there? That, that's what I saw it back there. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, let's let's move the Benedetto into shot. And yeah, bring the bring the Benedetto in. As long as we're doing this, let's uh This is the Benedetto. Oh my god, that's so gorgeous. 
wonderful, beautiful instrument. Oh, oh geez, that's, that is beautiful. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's gorgeous. So it is a really so, wonderful guitar. So is this the Dear Questo? Yeah, yes, yes. Let's we, let's grab let's grab the oh my god, look at that thing. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> Let me make sure this one's in tune, huh? I think it is. Yeah. Oh my god. It, yeah, so this is the beautiful, beautiful Oh my god. Guitar. Look at that. Really they're, they're just they're all I mean the I mean they're all amazing. They really are amazing. I love I loved it. I and, absolutely uh, loved it. Yeah, it's got that really unique bridge. Right. That he was known for. Uh, really beautiful. All right. You know, which one of my Ferraris do I drive today? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're we're real excited. Thank you for taking the time today, guys. So um, you know, it's it's really, really cool, Michael, that you um you're that passionate about recording. That's your background. And um, you know, that even the people that don't understand recording or don't care to understand, they'll benefit from what they hear sonically, you know. In well, the, in I, I hope the results meet your exacting expectations. Well, you know, I, I, the worst it can be is wonderful. That's oh, well, yeah. yeah, the worst it can be is wonderful. So let's just start with wonderful and we'll go from there. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. <laughs> well, hey. We want to really, um, I want to be sure to thank the Archtop Foundation because that's the Archtop right. Foundation is the, is the, the group that's putting this all together and uh and making this happen and their their whole goal is to connect people to connect people with these beautiful instruments to connect players with the makers and these guitars are coming out to the rocky mountain archtop festival in september right some of them, some of them are yes some of them some are of them and 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 i believe the entire collection is going to be presented at the woodstock festival as well well, that's 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 very very cool. Well, jazz guitar today is very excited about presenting these guitars. When you finish the the post production on the uh, on on these projects, um, we're gonna we're very very excited about it. It's such a cool opportunity for us, and thank you very very much. I'm okay. Bob Baker for Jazz Guitar Today with Michael Watts and Ted Ludwig with the Chinnery Collection, uh, and this is exciting stuff, guys. It's very exciting stuff. So. See you later. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you both.